Hi, everyone. Carl Valeri with Aviation Careers Podcast. I'm your host today, and I have a really special guest with me today. You know, our scholarships guide has enabled thousands to realize their aviation career goals. Some of you may not qualify for scholarships to cover all of your training or simply, you know, just want to start flying right now while waiting for the results from those scholarships. Well, we have a solution for you, and I have somebody here that will help you realize uh, your dream of flight today. Stratus Financial offers loans for pilot training and is our newest sponsor, giving away scholarship guides using the coupon code STRATUS. So go to aviationcareerspodcast.com and uh, slash scholarships and use that coupon code STRATUS, uh, or aviationcareerspodcast.com slash free and use that coupon code. Uh, the Today, somebody who's really special, and somebody, and just to let you know, I met this person at at uh, Sun and Fun. Terrific guy, and uh, I just totally align with what he's doing. And and I'm, I've always wanted to do what he is doing, and that's help people get loans, and specifically for pilots. And he is the COO of Stratus Financial, Brandon Martini. Brandon, welcome to the show. It's so exciting to have you on. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm uh, I was really looking forward to today. So thanks so much. Awesome. And uh, so so I really want to get into this. Something that, uh, and one of the big things for me, and this is, I, like I said, I'm so excited to have you on because I have, you know, for decades been trying to help people move forward in their careers. There's been very few financial options as far as loans concer- are concerned. And you know those co- you know, competitors out there, et cetera. And there's been some ups and downs in the industry and there's some history there. But there's there's very few people that I feel do what you do. So um, first of all, why don't we back up a second and tell us, you know, why did you get started with Stratus? Yeah, absolutely. So I come from the I come from an aviation background. Actually, probably around the day that this ends up airing, uh, it will be uh, my 10 year anniversary of getting my private pilot certificate. So oh, cool. Uh, yeah, 2014, I, I got my pilot private pilot certificate. And uh, of course, I couldn't afford to fly because I was a, a kind of a, a newer father. My son was only a few years old. So I had the bright idea of buying an airplane with money that I borrowed from like four different people and uh, bought my first airplane and uh, started a, a flight school of all things. Um, started out in a closet um, at Riverside Airport, uh, um, Kilo Romeo Alpha Lima. Uh, literally, it was, a, it was a closet. They took down all the clothes and everything out of there from the maintenance staff and converted it. It was it was quite the sight to see. Uh, so started out with that maintenance closet, uh, ended up growing that to uh, two uh, fully built out 141 uh, flight school locations in Riverside and Redlands. Uh, we had 14 aircraft, uh, I think 16 flight instructors, and then a, a full service maintenance facility, um, which I still, still own part of today um, at Riverside. And uh, during that process of building that, there was one thing that every student always brought up to me, and it was a challenge for myself. And the challenge really was that no one could afford to to do it. Uh, I, I'll tell you this. I put all of it on credit cards back then. Um, it was not the smartest thing to do. They were 29 or 30 percent interest credit cards. But luckily, I was able to do it really close to FAA minimums. I did it in 41 and a half hours, which is not typical. Wow. Um, and, and at this time, 10 years ago, I was able to do it for under $9,000. So nowadays, it's it's normally going to be around between ten and twenty thousand for the average private pilot. So I, I knew the hardships it was for me to to get financing. So um, as I built the flight school, I joined uh, Entrepreneurs Organization, and I met one of my friends, um, and he's actually the co-founder with me of Stratus Financial. And uh, my friend Anthony and I, I, t- I ended up teaching how to fly at the flight school, and uh, he owns a law firm. He still owns it today uh, that specializes in private lending. Uh, so I said, Hey, Anthony, I need some help. I want to offer my students in house financing. And uh, we ended up doing, uh, he ended up working on the paperwork for me because that's what I wanted. And uh, while he was working on it, he started looking at the business model. It's like, hey, I think this is a great business model. I think we can help a lot more people. Uh, so let's let's turn this into a business. So we started off with one flight school, which was my flight school at Riverside Next Gen. And then we changed and then we grew to uh, two flight schools, then five, then 10. And now we work with uh, just a little over three years later, we work with over 260 flight schools across 36 states and expanding every month. So it's been a wild ride since that happened. And um, I was fortunate enough, I, I sold both my flight schools last year and, and now I'm full time with Stratus and, and making uh, other pilot streams come true, which has been really nice. Yeah, and that's absolutely terrific that you've done that. I am so happy you've done this too. Um, so one of the things I want to ask you is, what makes you different from the others that are out there? Because you know, if anybody who's listened to me for the years, I've told horror stories about the way people have gotten wrapped up into financing, and I tell people be very careful. 
you know, who you go with as far as financing is concerned. And I'm sure you will agree with me there. But I think your model is different. How would you explain how you're different? Well, the biggest thing is we are by pilots and for pilots. Um, the the first thing that, that started out this journey was me and Anthony. We're both pilots. We understand uh, the flight school journey. Uh, we understand how to go from zero to hero. Um, I'm, a, I'm a CFI, double I, MEI myself. I've got multi-engine ratings for, for land and sea and same for uh, single engine. And we really have a passion for flight. And I think it's that difference because we know where these students are coming from. We know their hurdles. Um, for, for example, some, some little things, but they make a big impact for any of our borrowers. As long as their school is opted in, we give them free supplemental ground school through gold seal ground school. Um, we pay for that if they're a borrower of ours and we do the same thing with shepherd air and, uh, we've created other partnerships as well, um, that we've been, uh, we've been offering our borrowers and that's just so they have the extra, just slight edge, uh, to, to end up being a, a better borrower and be a better pilot. So those are some of the big major things that make us different for the borrowers. Um, because a finance company, we end up doing the same things as a lot of other other finance companies, right? But it's really the other, it's the slight edges that you have in, in different parts of your life and, and uh, in the business that really makes a difference. And I think that's really a big one. One of the things that I tell a lot of people is that you really are, when you're looking at a loan, a lot of times it's just like putting it on your credit card. Uh, because some some of the loan companies that are out there, again, we're not going to mention any names, uh, it's very similar to having a credit card. Yours is different. In what way is it different? Yeah, so there's there's different uh, finance options. Now, depending on your credit score, you could have really kind of low balances or you can have, or, sorry, low credit scores. Or you can have high credit uh, high credit scores. And, and we also look at a, a bunch of other features as well. We don't just look at your credit score. We're going to look at your debt to income, your credit score, um, your income, uh, if you have a co-borrower or not. We're going to look at all these different factors to give you several different loan options. And we have five to seven different loan options. And we allow you to choose anywhere from a deferred product where it's deferred for one year, followed by one year of interest only, followed by 14, or 13 years of uh, fully amortized. Um, and then we have other options that you start paying in the beginning, and that way you don't have to be paying as much in your training period. Um, and outside of all of that, the, the rates on a, on a credit card are, are, are nowadays close to 30%. Um, they go from 25 to really 35%. I've even seen as high as 40 in some cases. And you have low limits. So the average person does not have $85,000 to put on a credit card. That's just not going to happen. Um, either you're going to have to take a second mortgage on your house, you're going to have to save the cash, or you're going to have to go through a third-party option like ours. Um, so the credit card option is really not going to work for almost anybody unless they just per they're just getting a private pilot. If they just want a private pilot, it might work out for them. Um, and that's not our core customer. We do help some people that just want to become a private pilot, but we really want to help customers um, who, want to, who want to go zero to hero and want to be that commercial pilot. You know, there's a, a myth out there, I think, that a lot of people get confused with is that, you know, I, because I really push scholarships, as you know, and people say, well, if I get a scholarship, I can't get an, any additional financing. And, and well, how would you answer that question or that statement? I would say that's absolutely not true. Um, I encourage people to go get a scholarship. Um, get as many scholarships as you can um, so you don't have the financial burden. And and even if you even if you get a loan with, with Stratus or even somebody else, Take that scholarship money and you can normally apply it towards your loan. Or you could tell that finance company that, hey, I got a $5,000 or $10,000 scholarship or even a $1,000 scholarship that got paid directly to my flight school because that's mostly how scholarships work in our industry, at least generally. Mm -hmm. um, if that does happen, then you can just let the, the finance company know. At least you can let Stratus know. I know that for a fact. You can say, hey, I'm not going to need $5,000 of my flight training because I got a $5,000 scholarship through XYZ scholarship. And what we'll do is we'll just pay down your principal, and now you'll have less months or years to pay on your loan. Um, and it'll also lower your interest that you pay over the over the term of that loan. So it's really advantageous. Go get all those scholarships you can. Apply for them all. For these loans that you're talking about, we have a lot of listeners all over the country and also in other countries. About 20% of our, our listeners are outside the United States. So kind of let's get a little more granular. You know, who can actually apply for these loans? Yeah, so uh, with us, due to our banking relationships, you do have to either be a U.S. citizen, um, just like any other lender, but you also can be a 
basically a green card holder. If you have a social security number um, and you have a cosigner, you're able to get a loan through us. And under certain circumstances, um, even if you are an outside um, an outside citizen, you're a non-legal citizen of the United States, if you have a co-borrower that has significant income and assets who can be your primary borrower, um, we have allowed that in the past. And that's on a on a per basis case, um, but it is possible. So generally, you need to be a U.S. citizen, but there are specialty cases where we can allow non-U.S. citizens to also become borrowers. Interesting. So I hear a lot, uh, or a lot of our clients are actually sponsored here by certain schools, et cetera. Um, so if they were to like want to move on in their ratings, uh, would they be eligible or through some type of special situation, can they be eligible? Uh, if they're a non-U.S. citizen, and if they're just here on a like a school visa or something like that, um, there's a possibility as long as they have a U.S. citizen co-borrower gotcha. and they qualify. Yeah, All right, and if, good. I wanted to say that again. That's good. Absolutely. So one of the other questions I get often, and this is a, is a, a nebulous question usually, it's like, what are the rates reasonable? So explain us what reasonable is these days in the industry. <laughs> Yeah, so reasonable sounds different to a lot of people, uh, depending on where you're at and what you've done in the past, I would say three years or so. Um, I'll tell you this, three years ago, the prime interest rate was a lot lower than it is now. And uh, for the listeners who aren't, who don't know what the prime interest rate is, uh, the Federal Reserve controls interest rates. They raise them and they, they lower them, um, sometimes on a quarterly basis, sometimes even more often than that, or they leave them the same. Um, when we first started this, um, you could get a home loan for around two and a quarter percent um, if you want a home loan. And that was with 10 or 20 percent down on a house. If you're a first time borrower, maybe a little less down. Um, over 30 years, and you'd get two and a half to three percent. That was a normal mortgage, and that was backed by, an, uh, by a, an asset that is repossessable and that's likely to go up in value. So, with that basis, you can look at what the prime rate is now today. And I bought a house, uh, my new house that I, that I live in most of the time in Florida. And I bought that house in December. And I have great credit and, and pretty good income, and I got a 8.25% APR. And that was with 10% down, and that's on a 30-year mortgage. So that just tells you where the rates have changed and how prime has gone up over the past three years. And you can look at that over, you can just look up the prime data that's changed. So with all that being said, the interest rates are a lot higher nowadays, and it's nothing we can really do about it unless the Federal Reserve changes the rates. So the way that we do it, um, based on your credit rating and score and, and all these different factors that we look like to, to make what we call a strata score, um, it's which an internal scoring model that we use in our computer system. And basically, depending on your strata score is what, what rate you would apply or you would be qualified for an A plus all the way through like a, like a C minus, right? So depending on that, you can get an interest rate anywhere from 9% all the way up to say 23%. Um, I would say the average person is getting – normally we have intro rates in case you want to pay them down a little bit earlier. You can get between 10 and 12 percent on those intro rates. And then one to two years later, they do go up and they're somewhere between 15 and 18 percent, I would say, on average. And like I said, that may sound high, but our rate – our Borrowers are not putting any collateral. There's no down payment, and there is nothing that is that is stopping them from stopping training and not paying us. Besides the fact that we'll report on their credit report, and 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 we would go we would go collection routes like anybody else. So it's a really difficult industry for borrowing to or to uh, for lending to happen in. And uh, if we look at kind of trends in the industry, we we have a roughly 10 to 20 percent dropout rate for career-based students and and that really impacts loans and, and lending as well so you've, you've seen it at some of the major schools that have 80 80 uh, or so locations across the u.s they have a their dropout rates even higher than that so it's it's kind of difficult so so brandon we talked about the rates and what's reasonable but as far as accessing money for your flight training this has been an issue in the past I've seen companies where they put all the money into an account at a flight school, and if you don't like that flight school, you can't leave, or it's hard to leave. But walk me through how it works with Stratus as far as access to the money and what happens if you're not satisfied with the school you're at. Yeah, absolutely. So I actually, I, I did a lot of research on this in the past because I've heard the horror stories that have happened uh, in the flight training industry, especially over the past 20 years. Um, there was a large helicopter school that that put a lot of people in debt, and uh, they never got their ratings. One of my friends was even one of them, and uh, he was he was in debt till pretty much the day he passed away. So I mean, it's it was pretty bad. Um, we we wanted to avoid those pitfalls. Obviously, we wanted to make sure that that students have uh, access to these funds, and 
and we limit their exposure. So we really have we really have three goals. We want to make sure that our investors and our banking relationships they get what they need. Uh, we want to make sure that flight schools get what they need. And we want to make sure that students get treated fairly and get what they need. So we actually uh, we lower our risk and exposure to the schools, every school, by using payment milestones. So there's a lot of schools or a lot of other finance companies that would pay in, in either weekly or monthly or quarterly tranches. And that would be regardless of the student training or not. But we both know flight training takes time. If you're a pilot and the weather's bad for a week or two, hey, it's just not going to uh, – you're not going to be flying. Now, if the if – the, uh, if the finance company is still paying the school, you're probably going to have an issue with that. The school is going to continue having the same uh, same expenses, and maybe they might dip into your money if they're if they're not a kind of a well-rounded school with escrow accounts, right? Um, although we can't really control those escrow accounts and things like that with the schools, uh, what we can do is we can control the frequency of payments, and we can do it based on milestones of progress for a student. So unlike most of our competitors that that pay on on time based uh, time based loans. We actually pay based on hourly milestones based on flight time. So I've developed different uh, ways to calculate how many hours you would get in a certain dollar amount. So we limit the amount of money that's sent to the school. We generally have around five to seven different payment tranches for somebody who's going from like zero to CF high. And that's how we lower the li- we lower and limit the exposure uh, to our flight schools for our borrowers. On top of that, we also require borrowers, or sorry, we require, require flight schools to refund any unused funds um, that the student doesn't use directly to Stratus Financial. So, and what we'll do with that, if the student decided they were done flight training, then we would just pay down their, their principal balance and either modify their loan or just pay down their principal and they would have less years left on their on their loan. Or number two, if they wanted to transfer schools, we would work to get that money back from the school. And uh, and then once it's given back to the school, then we can transfer them to a new school. And uh, and we make sure that all of our flight school partners are aware of this. It's part of our underwriting process of flight schools, actually. Have you ever had that happen? Uh, yeah, we have lots of times, actually. There's there's several students. I wouldn't say lots of times where, where students just decide they want to quit with us. Uh, we underwrite the students and the schools pretty well and try to avoid that. Uh, but it's somewhere around 10%, I'm, I'm sure. Okay. Um, well, that, that's proof right there. It works. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I would say that most of those schools have sent back funding. Um, all we do is we have to tell the school, hey, we're not going to fund any of your other students anymore if you don't send it back. And for some reason, they all play ball with us and they all send the money back. It's weird how that would happen. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, hit them in the pocketbook, right? The uh, <laughs> So, so as far as schools are concerned, uh, I know you said you work with a lot of different schools. How would someone find out uh, what schools you do work with? Yeah, so we don't pub- we don't make that public uh, because we don't. Well, I, I take that back. We make parts of it public, but we don't we don't publish our complete list of flight schools anywhere because. Uh, we, if our competitor wants to get our list, we want to make it a little bit difficult for them, right? Uh, but if the student wants to find out, if they call us and be like, who would you recommend for a flight school? Um, I would encourage them to reach out to us and we would recommend somebody in their area. We can give them a list of three or five schools that we work with. Like I said, we work with 260 plus schools in the U.S. We can find likely find somewhere that's close to them as long as they're in a state that we lend at. Uh, but outside of that, I would say go to your local airport that's close to you. Find a well-rounded, good school. It doesn't have to be 141. It could be part part 61 school as well. And uh, just find one that utilizes a properly utilized syllabus. And uh, and their flight instructors have a little bit more time than on, on them than just the guy who just got out of CFI school, right? So go find that person and see what their financing options are. If they're in one of the states that we lend in, I almost guarantee we will be a lending partner for them. And uh, and that would probably be the easiest way to find us. But you can go on our website and uh, just click the apply button on the top right corner. And uh, even if you don't know the flight school, you can at least see if you get pre-approved. Interesting. Well, that's great news. And and to add to that comment, by the way, a lot of people ask me why I don't recommend flight schools. I do, but I only do that on a private one-on-one basis when we do our career coaching. Uh, there's many reasons for that, especially uh, you know putting it out there uh, on the internet and uh, liability issues usually is what it is for me. Uh, but I like the fact that if you they can contact you directly to a- directly to ask uh, if I know a flight school that's in the area and they don't know about Stratus. How can somebody at one of those flight schools uh, start working with you if they own that flight school? 
Yeah, so they can do it one of a few different ways. If they go onto our website, there's a there's a form that flight schools can fill out and, and become a partner. Uh, they can also email us at partnerships at uh, stratus.finance, and, uh, and then we can let them know our underwriting requirements. In some circumstances, we will allow a student to go to a non-partner school. Uh, we call it our NPS program. Uh, the school must be able to accept credit cards rather than our usual wire or ACH way that we pay. And we really monitor that student a lot closer. And we, we kind of take a little more hands-on approach to that student to make sure that the school is giving them what they need to be giving them. Uh, and honestly, that normally turns into a new partner school for us anyways. Um, so that's the reason why we do that. So even if your school is not on our list, there's a possibility we could finance your flight training anyways. What would you advise for somebody who's getting started uh for a loan, say they want to get started in this process of applying for a loan. They haven't actually applied yet, but what, sh what should they do? Yeah, so make sure you get your medical. Uh, after you get your medical, uh, that then you know that you're going to be able to fl start flight training. Then you would have, just have to go to either the, uh, uh, the website that the school provides you, or you can go to stratus.finance and click apply. And once you go there, you'll fill out the application. At the end of the application, it's going to tell you one of a few different scenarios. One, it'll say you're outright denied, which is not really a likely scenario. Two, it'll say, hey, you need a co-borrower, and uh, you just need to find a co-borrower. Maybe you already have one uh, ready to go. Um, or three, it'll give you a conditional approval uh, instantly. And when you get conditionally approved, it doesn't mean that you're fully approved. Um, it's the same thing if you buy a house. It means you're conditionally approved as long as you can prove everything that you put on that application. So some of the things that we're going to ask for is we're going to ask for that first or second class medical certificate that I explained earlier. Uh, second, we're going to ask you for photo ID, proof who you are. Uh, we're going to ask you to sign some documents proving who you are. Uh, we're also going to ask for two months of bank statements. Uh, two months of paycheck stubs. If you're not working at all, we are probably going to ask you for a co-signer. There's extenuating circumstances. If you have a lot of money in the bank or, or you have a home that you have a lot of equity. Now, granted, we are not giving you a, a loan on your house at all. It's just we we examine that and look at it in, in our whole picture of you as a borrower. We want somebody who's stable. Um, if that's you, that's fantastic. If it's not you, maybe it's your co-borrower if you're starting out in life a little earlier and trying to get this loan. One of the things that is really important for me as the borrower is the stability of the company that I'm loaning uh, or borrowing money from. Uh, as far as, as your company is concerned, um, you know, we've seen this happen in the past with certain you know, lenders going out of business. How can I make myself feel more secure in the fact that I'm borrowing from you and, and the money will keep flowing in to me as the, as the borrower? Well, I can tell you this. I can't release a lot of details, but we have over $200 million in lending capacity that's closing in the next 60 to 120 days. Um, that will catapult Stratus to becoming the number one lender in the industry. Uh, and we will be able to hopefully change some of our underwriting guidelines and, and, and make more loans than anybody's ever done in the history of flight training. That's my goal. So I can tell you that we've uh, we've originated nearly $60 million in loans since our inception. Most of that's been done in the past year. It's quite a bit of money uh, infusing into our flight schools and uh, into students' futures. Um, I want to... Uh, I want to quadruple that or more. I think that the capacity for Stratus is up to $600 million a year. Um, I'm working uh, every angle to be able to pull that off long term. Um, I've put all my eggs in this basket, Stratus basket, to put my reputation. I put everything on the line. Um, and and if you don't know me, uh, you're, you can get to know me anytime. I'll be at Oshkosh. I'll be in the booth in and out, and I'll be running around there if anybody wants to come meet me and say hello. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, i I'm, I'm here for the long haul. I'm here for the students. And like I said, we're, we're by pilots and we're for pilots. So that's the biggest differentiator, I think. We understand this industry and, and it, it helps when, when Wall Street knows that somebody who knows the industry is on the inside. Absolutely. And by the way, hats off to you. Like I said, I've always wanted to start a business like this. I'm, I'm glad I see somebody who's as passionate about this as I am that has done this. And, I, and, and I'm really I'm excited about Stratus Financial. One of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show, and we're so proud to have you as a sponsor, because uh, I really think you're moving the needle, and, um, and we're excited to see what happens in the future. Uh, and we're so excited that you've sponsored our scholarships. And you actually, uh, not only do you sponsor our scholarships guide through the, the free scholarships, but you also have one of your own. If you, uh, if you might want to mention that, you can find that at Stratus.Finance, I think, scholarships, correct? Yeah, Stratus.Finance forward slash scholarship. And if you check that out, we actually extended uh, the period for you to apply for it uh, until the middle of uh, July. Uh, so I really encourage you to 
uh, to apply for that. Uh, we will be announcing the scholarship winner during Oshkosh. There will be a press release. Um, I really hope that uh, we get some more applications because, uh, as you know, Carl, there's not that many people that apply for scholarships in aviation, and it is crazy to me. There's so much <laughs> free money out there that if you just apply and just go through the the steps, there's a good chance you could get it. And I, I'm not allowed to release how many people have applied with us. Uh, my marketing director won't let me. No. But I can tell you, <laughs> it's not – an incredibly giant amount. There is a good chance for somebody to get a, uh, a scholarship through us and, and really through almost anyone else. I really encourage you to go on and apply for all that you totally can. Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, to help out, uh, obviously, when we put a scholarship in the scholarships guide, it helps out the person that's uh, actually trying to give away those. And we actually just put this one in our scholarships guide. So hopefully that'll help you get some more applicants. Uh, but I'm glad you mentioned that. Because as far as scholarships are concerned, if a lot of times you feel like you won't be able to get that scholarship, go ahead and, and apply because I could, I have stories over stories over stories where people have said, you know what, I don't think I can get it, but they do. And not only that, sometimes they get doubled the number of scholarships because the scholarship organization uh, has no other applicants and they have maybe two scholarships for the same item and they give both the amounts to you. And I've seen that happen and it's amazing. So please apply, even though you might think you can't, please apply. And that's why we try to make the scholarships guide so affordable. It's only $10 for a year access. And we have so many people like yourself that we, we love that they're, they're helping pay it forward by giving away those scholarships guides. Um, so absolutely. Um, and just remember that combine the two, just like we said in the beginning, right? The scholarships and the loans. And uh, and that's why I th I think that what you're doing is, is absolutely terrific. And uh, we want to see you succeed. Absolutely want to see you succeed, Brandon. And I think what you're doing is absolutely terrific. But for those that are listening, where can they find out more about, about uh, Stratus Finance? Yeah, absolutely. So you can find out more about Stratus Financial at uh, www.stratus.finance. There's no .com like everyone always thinks. It's just stratus.finance. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, um, all the social media places. Um, I also have a, uh, a podcast called the Aviation Mentors Podcast. Uh, you can find us on RSS. You can find us on uh, on anywhere that podcasts stream, including Apple Podcasts and uh, and Spotify. I happen to be in the, the Aviation Mentors Podcast studio today. Normally, I've got my co-host with me, but today it's uh, it's me and Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's awesome. I, I think that's really cool what you're doing, though, especially with Aviation Mentors podcast and, and just putting it for, you know, making everybody accessible to aviation. I mean, that's really what you're doing. You're making aviation accessible to all the people that are out there uh, through loans, uh, through what you're doing with scholarships. Uh, and through your encouragement. I think that's really important too. So uh, really, I appreciate what you do, Brandon. And, I, and I'm excited to see you move forward with this, the Stratus Finance. And uh, and one of the things I think that's really important is if you don't think you can get a loan, just contact Stratus.Finance. I make you bet you can. Uh, or if you can't get one right away, they can help you. And just look at Brandon. He's so easy to talk to. And you can ask them, hey, what do I need to do uh, to maybe change uh, the characteristic of my loan? And there, they'll be more than willing to help you. So Brandon, I, again, I really appreciate your coming here. Any last thoughts on, on Stratus Finance before we leave? Uh, no, I think we hit all the major uh, points. I, I just want to encourage you, if even if you don't think you 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 can get the loan, please apply. Uh, there's there's a good chance we might might help you out. And and every once in a while, we we look at uh, borrowers and make make we don't just we don't just look at a borrower based on just a scoring model. Sometimes we'll look a little bit deeper and and give you a chance, especially if you've got a good story behind you. Um, things like that sometimes make a difference. I mean, like I said, we're, we're by pilots for pilots. We really want to help as many people as we can out. We started out with the scholarship this year for the $5,000. I have a strong feeling next year it'll be more. So keep on, keep on trying to go for your dream. And by the way, if you don't get approved from us or, or anybody else, please don't give up on your dream. There's so many people that tell me they can't afford it. And I'll tell you this. I, I, I moved out of my parents' house when I was 18, um, just to, to go live my life. And I, I had to work a lot of jobs. Um, I think at one point I had six, four part-time jobs and two full-time. And it was just to figure out what I wanted to do and live my dreams. And um, eventually aviation became my dream. And, and I stuck with it no matter how hard and expensive it was. And you can do it too. So just always remember that it's inside of you. All you have to do is believe something can happen and it will. So don't give up on your dreams, guys. 
Absolutely. Great advice, Brandon. It's been wonderful talking to you, and I'd love to have you back on again. For those people that have questions, obviously you can go to aviationcareerspodcast.com and, uh, or feedback at aviationcareerspodcast.com. Uh, also, Stratostat Finance, if you have uh, questions directly uh, towards Brandon, they're more than willing to, to reach out. I will say they do get back to you, which is amazing. they really good customer service, so hats off to them. And I really uh, would love that if you're you're ta- thinking about aviation at all, don't give up on that dream because one of the things, and you've heard me say this many times, money is just one hurdle. And what Stratus Finance and what we try to do here at Aviation Careers Podcast is help you get over that whole hurdle. And you know what? There's a lot of other people that have. And then the way they did that is they took one step every day to move forward in their career and they kept looking. They kept looking for loans. And I know right now you may have been through your 10th loan application, your 10th scholarship application, but sometimes you need just one to come through and it'll make a huge difference in your life. So do that for me. Take one step today to move forward in your career and your life and I know you will get there sooner than you think. We'll talk to you next episode. Safe flying out there.